Hello guys, what's going on? My name is Stone and welcome to Accelerate. This is our fourth episode and I'm very excited to bring with you waterfall graphs. So this is a must-have skill for every Excel user and I'm very excited to bring it to you today. But before we start, remember to hit that like and subscribe. I saw on our last counter we've got 45 subscribers to this channel. If I can get 50 subscribers, I'm going to leave you a treasure box down in the descriptions below. Alright, so first of all, Welcome to our fourth episode. This is all about water graphs. So if you look at this little illustration here, you can see patterns of water going up and down resembling a waterfall. And going into our Excel graph here, um, we try to replicate exactly that. So usually you'll start off with an opening balance. Something moves down and something moves up and then we leave, we're left with a closing balance. So that's what we're trying to replicate here today. So guys, let's get into Excel. So I'm on my desktop here, so I'm going to create a new Excel spreadsheet here. And I'm just going to call it Waterfall. All right. We're going to our brand new Excel spreadsheet that we just created. And I'm going to show you guys uh, an old school method of creating a waterfall graph as well as a new school method so if you still got old versions of excel no problem we're going to use the old school method and if you've got uh, excel 2013 and up then we're going to use the new method but don't throw away the old one just yet at the last phrase um, we're going to show you the most powerful tool which the new method can't handle yet so let's get into this one so first of all let's just start off with a old school waterfall table so first of all we're going to create a little table here we're going to start off so let's say let's set the scene so everybody's got a bank account so let's let's see we're going to try to track our bank account and visualize that with a waterfall graph right exciting stuff so let's do it bank account and then let's put it the amounts in dollars right so let's start off we've got an opening balance opening balance of our account let's say we get a, a salary so this is our income as well as let's say we get rental income as well so we rent out the house and we get rental income for that and this will give us a total income all right simple stuff for now so now let's go into cell b3 so cell b3 we're going to start with our totals we're going to go to c3 we're going to say blank we're going to go to d3 we're going to say you're going to choose the exact same opening balance, salary, rental income, and total income. You can right click copy, you can click on D2, you can go to paste, and you can transpose copy. So that will take those that you copied and transpose into the columns here. Or you can just type it out, whatever you prefer. So at blank, we're just going to say year one on top of blank. On top of opening balance, you can say two. Then on E, we're going to say three, four, and five. You can also just highlight one and two and drag them out. It will do the exact same job. Right. So let's start off. So we've got an opening balance. So let's say our opening balance for this instance is $100. $100. So we start off our bank account, $100. Let's say we get a salary of $200. Uh, so that will give us a rental uh, and rental income of let's say 50 and now if we sum everything together so you can hit the auto sum here and you can highlight and we'll end off with a 350 here so that's the sum of everything or you can just say equals that d4 plus e5 plus f six will give you the exact same answer all right so let's just make our table look a little bit better so i'm just going to merge and center the top half here 
I'm going to give a border for this table as well as the top border and I'm just going to bold out you can just bold out these line items as well just to give it a little bit better look and feel and what I also like to do is just merge and center these items here so you can just hit merge and center there so there's just um, cosmetic changes to our table and now you, you try to remember we added this blank space here so first of all the blank space is the total that will be subtracted from the uh, sub uh, like the salary coming in so it will subtract that part in the waterfall graph and we're going to take that away so the bl blank space is quite necessary so what we're going to do is in c5 we're just going to say equals d4 so that should only give us the top uh, number here and the same for in c6 it will only be 100 plus 200 here or you can also hit the auto sum here and you can drag out your sums as well it will give you the exact same answer so now we've prepared our table so let's try and work out our graph here a waterfall graph so i'm just going to copy Control c and i'm going to go to a9 and Control v that just copies our first field there i'm just going to re replace table with graph all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to insert our waterfall graph in here now so first of all let's highlight the items that we need so we're going to go from total you're going to highlight b3 to g7 and you're going to go to insert and we're going to insert a common stacked bar chart stack bar chart here I'm going to click on it and usually it looks kind of funny once it populates but we can just switch the row and column there we go that's the look we're looking for right so which i'm just going to replace or place it here so it looks nice as well so now this chart, bar, chart title we can uh, assign a name to it so you just highlight the chart title it equals you will see in the formula bar equal sign comes up and we're tracking our bank account so we're going to go to a2 and hit enter so that links that chart title so if we if we were tracking a income statement income statement you will see it automatically changes that as well i'm just going to hit undo because we're tracking our bank account here all right awesome also now we can double click on the chart and we're going to populate this one two three and four so what we're going to do is we're going to go to select data and here on the right hand column the horizontal column we're going to go to edit and we can choose this axis label range to go from total blank opening balance salary rental income and total balance and we're going to hit enter sorry it's only coming from opening balance there we go and we hit ok so now you will see opening balance was hundred dollars oh let's double click this graph once again we're going to go to add a chart element and we're just going to have a data label being inside we can put it inside or outside the bar so let's go with uh, inside end here and now what we can do is you see the totals here we can just click on the totals it should highlight like that we're going to hit delete we're going to click on the blank as well and we're going to hit delete and now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight the blank bars here the orange bars here and we're going to go to a full and we're going to full we're going to say no full so that takes away the color and we can also click on the data callouts and it should highlight all um, two of them and you can hit delete so that's perfect that's our first waterfall graph here so i'm just going to 
insert a little border here. Just going to give it a nice border. And there we go. That's our very first part of the waterfall graph. So you will see we start off with our opening balance, which was $100. It increases by $200, our salary. Then it increases by $50, our rental income, and we're left with a total of $350. So this is quite nice for now. And now we're going to just show you the new school way of doing it as well. So I'm just going to copy and paste the old school bar here. Control C and Control V. I'm going to rename it to New School Waterfall Table. So this is for the guys that has Excel 2013 and up, and we're going to be able to replicate a nice waterfall graph in a much shorter space of time. So I'm going to copy opening balance, salary, rental income, and total income. Copy. That's Control C. I'm going to hit Control V here. And I'm just going to plug in the same amount. So I'm going to say 100 was our opening balance, 200 was our salary, 50 was our rental income, and I'm going to hit auto sum to give us the 350 total here. I can give it a nice border here. You can unmerge, merge it again, the A and B column here, and we can take away the remaining borders here. Right, so look at this guys, this is quite interesting as well. We're going to highlight opening balance up until total income with the amounts here. And then we're going to go to insert. And then here should be a waterfall graph here for the 2013 and up Excel version. And you can just hit waterfall graph. So this, this populates our waterfall graph. Now. First of all, you'll see something looks funny here. You see this counts our total income as coming from our rental income, which is incorrect. So this should be set as a total. This is a quick fix. You can double click on the graph here. It should open up our format chart area here on the right hand side. We're going to double click on this. So it should highlight our columns and we're just going to left click once again. So it only highlights the, the fourth column here, the total income. We're going to go to our options here, our series options, and we're going to just set it as a total. So there we go. That automatically sets it to a total, and our bar, and this waterfall graph looks exactly the same as our as our old school bar here, uh, waterfall chart here, except it was much quicker. And obviously, the chart title we can't with this waterfall graph. You can't uh, link it. Unfortunately, I have tried, but haven't accomplished yet, so I'm just going to type it out, bank account. So you'll see it looks more or less the same, but this is the old school method, and this is our new school method. Alright, so that was our first phase. We're going to phase two. Let's say we've got uh, deductions as well in our bank account. So we, what goes up must come down, unfortunately. So if we earn some money, we're going to spend some money. So let's try to replicate this with our waterfall graph going forward. So first of all, we need to amend our graph here. So I'm just going to add in four line items here for our exercise. I'm just going to go highlight eight here and I'm going to say insert. I'm going to insert another column or row. One more and just one for extra measure. All right, so this will replicate our expenses now. So let's say I've got a house payment. I've got a car payment. Let's say we buy some groceries and that will give us a closing balance. There we go. All right, so remember we can highlight all these columns. We're going to say Control C and then here in H4, I'm going to paste it and transpose it again. Or you can type it out as well. I'm just going to highlight all the columns, double click on the last column and that will give us a nice spacing. 
I'm going to highlight 4 and 5 and I'm just going to drag drag it out here once it gives us this little symbol and then there we go I'm just going to merge this as well here we go alright so let's say my house payment is a hundred dollars for argument's sake my car payment is seventy five dollars and our groceries is fifty dollars so at the end of the day our closing balance will be equals our total income remember that's our opening balance plus our salary plus our rental income less house payment less car payment less groceries so we should end up with a balance of $125 happiness all right so what I'm going to do I'm just gonna highlight all our table options here I'm just gonna give it a nice border as well so what we can do is to illustrate it, illustrate it quite nicely we can also darken these columns that's not in use currently I'm just gonna leave out the blanks for now so let's highlight also I, I hold in control and left click all the cells that doesn't have a current amount in them as well it will highlight the table so I'm just highlighting every column that doesn't have a amount yet I'm just gonna give it a gray area just to show it nicely or illustrate that's not in use all right so I'm also just going to highlight our first phase here the income so we know that we need to start off here so what happens with this column is we need to go in equals the 350 less the 100 so remember we start we've got total income of 350 dollars before our expenses and now our house payment come in hundred dollars so this should give us 250 the next one will be equals 250 less 75 should give us 175 and now e, we're going to go with our final one we're going to say equals 175 less the 50 and we should end up with the same amount here so i'm just going to highlight this to green to show we're definitely balancing with this blank column here so what i'm going to do now is I'm going to double click on our old school uh, waterfall graph. I'm going to go to select data here. And you will see you can click on this and we're going to select our totals once again from total up until closing balance. Now if we hit OK, you will see, I'm just going to hit OK here. There's our new and improved waterfall graph showing the um, income going up we're left with a total and then expenses coming down so this represents a very nice waterfall graph for our bank account S uh, but you will see it populated this one two three four now so we're just going to double click we're going to go back to select data we're going to go to edit and then we're going to go from opening balance up until closing balance and we're going to hit that enter button and say OK. So now that should populate our uh, X axis here. So that shows us opening balance, salary, rental income, total income, house payment coming down, car payment going down, groceries going down, and we're left with a nice closing balance. And it shows this legends as well. You can take away the legends if it's unnecessary for you. So you can just left click on the legends and hit delete. And that will give us the nice look and feel for our waterfall graph here so let's do the same for our new school graph so I'm just going to insert our four line items for the expenses one two three four Maybe we can just highlight from house payment up until closing balance control C control V and the house payment was less 100 for the new school method you can put in the less sign as well in front of the amount car payment was less 75 our groceries was less 50 and 
we were left, we can hit auto sum from 350 up until this 50 and we're going to be left with the 125. I'm going to hit it green as well because we balance with our green up top. Just going to give it a nice feel and then we can just left, we can see if you left click on the new school graph, it already populates this for you and we can just, once it shows the sign there, we can drag it down and we can hit enter and there we go. So this populates our graph once again and now you will see the exact same method from my old school. It will show you the opening balance, the salary going up, rental income, we left with a total income and then house payment coming down, car payment going down and grocers coming down. But remember it shows this funky end closing balance going up again. So we just left click on the closing balance. It should only highlight the closing balance. Go to our series options and we're just going to set it as a total and that should bring it back to a total column. So I'm just going to show you back to back how it looks. The new school, new school graph versus the old school graph. The exact same job, but the new school is quick, much quicker than the old school one. But now what the power, the power that sits with the old school one is now we can make a stacked waterfall graph chart. So this is quite interesting stuff. And I'm going to show you with this file now what I mean with the powerful uh, stacked waterfall chart. So let's say we wanted to stack our income together and we wanted to stack our expenses together and show it in a waterfall graph. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So here in salary, I'm going to change here in A5. I'm going to highlight this for you in yellow. I'm going to change the salary to total or just to income. Let's say income. Income. And I'm going to change. I'm going to change this rental income. I'm going to shift it to the top. So I'm just going to say 50 here. Hit enter. I'm going to take the 50 out here. And I'm just going to form, I'm just going to take out the color as well here. Just going to say no fill. And I'm going to gray this one out. Control C and Control V. This means our rental income line item is redundant. We can take that out. We can delete that. So right click delete. And it, sh it should show a ref here, but that's not a problem because we took out that other pro um, rental income we're going to just take it out and we're going to say plus this we still end up with the 350. we're going to do the exact same for our expenses so the, the only thing that changed is the rental income line item has been taken out and it's been placed adjacent to the salary line item i'm going to do the exact same with house payment so i'm going to highlight house payment in yellow and i'm going to change description to show expenses and it shows our house payment here. I'm going to take our car payment, shift it up, 75. Also going to shift out our groceries to 50. I'm going to take the 75 out of the car payment line item as well as the groceries. Or we can might as well take out these line items. I'm just going to highlight the two columns. Left click and drag. Right click, delete. And I'm going to highlight the two line items. I'm just going to say no fill to show what we need here. And now the only thing that needs to change is this. It still shows the sum of total income less house payments, but we need to say less car payments as well, less groceries. So we should end up with the 125. Just gonna highlight that in green. And you'll see this is also a ref here. So it also takes out the references here. So it should read total income, less house payments, less car payments, less groceries. We're going to say enter. So we should balance again. And now if we look at our bank account waterfall graph now, it changed where we had in individual line items for our salary and our rental income. Now we've got for our, and also we're going to change this. There we go. And now it shows 
the chunks stacked together. So now we can clearly see as our salary was a larger part of our income as opposed to our rental income. And for our expenses, we can see clearly our house payment section was much larger than the car payment and the groceries. And we left with the same bank account balance here. So this works perfectly. That was Waterfall Graphs 101. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this. And as I said, if we can get to a 50 subscribers on this channel, I'm going to leave you the treasure box down below. Remember to subscribe. Remember to like, leave a comment, I'll get back to you. And our next uh, video will look into uh, speedometer graphs. So that's quite exciting stuff as well. Guys, thank you for tuning in. It was wonderful having you here. And from me, Stone, and from Accelerate, cheers.